All right, so today's lecture is for September 24th. We are going to be looking at Bohr models. And the purpose of Bohr models are to show where and how electrons are placed in an atom. That's our purpose behind actually having these individual models. Now, we've seen a Bohr model in our previous uh, videos or in our previous lectures. Our example of a Bohr model is, is like this right here. We have our nucleus and our little electrons within our orbits. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to draw out an example and we're going to label the individual parts. So each of our rings here, these are your orbits. And orbits are where your electrons are located. And electrons, they can just be hanging about here. So those are your individual electrons. Now, within the center right here, this is going to be our nucleus. And your nucleus is where your protons and neutrons are hanging about. Now, protons and neutrons, that's where the most uh, weight comes from, from your individual atoms. Electrons are actually very small in weight. Their weight is almost insignificant. So this is our basic example of a Bohr model. Now, within each Bohr model, you're going to have different energy levels. And energy levels are going to be the same thing as your orbits. So each orbit is a different energy level. And of course, energy level in orbits are based off of your, your periods. Periods go from side to side. So each row that you have on the periodic table is a different period. So each one going back and forth. So you will have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven periods, which means you will have a maximum of seven energy levels. You have a maximum of seven orbits. So maximum is seven. Now, Going through our different orbits, our different energy levels, the main question we have is, how do we know how many electrons are allowed in each orbit. So how do we know how many electrons are allowed in each orbit? Well, that's solved with the equation 2n squared. And n is going to mean our energy level. So big star next to that one. So as we go through, let's look at our first energy level. In our first energy level, again, that's our first row, so hydrogen and helium. So this is our first energy level. N is 1, simply because it's our first row. So I have the equation 2 times 1 squared. So if you take apart your order of operations, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you know, parentheses, exponents, 
multiplication, division, etc. So we know that we're going to look at our exponent first. So 1 squared. 1 squared is the same as 1 times 1. And 1 times 1 equals 1. So then we go through, we calculate our multiplication. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So my first energy level will have a maximum of 2 electrons. If we look at our second energy level, so our second energy level, that means N will be 2 this time. So 2 times 2 squared. Order of operations, we're going to do our exponent first. So 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Go back and do our multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8. So I know for my second energy level, I will have a maximum of 8 electrons. Now the last one that we're going to do together is calculate your third energy level. So we have our third energy level. N will be 3 because it's the third energy level. So 2 times 3 squared. Do your exponent first. So 3 squared. That's equal to 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So 2 times 9 be equal to 18. So we will have a maximum of 18 electrons. The last little bit is going to um, actually take us apart. So we're going to look at our first energy level again. And we're going to look at our two elements. We have hydrogen and we have helium. So my first question is, what is your atomic number for hydrogen? Remember, atomic numbers are the small numbers. So hydrogen will have an atomic number of 1. And helium will have an atomic number of 2. So remember last class when we were talking about our acronyms, we had APE, MAN. Our atomic number is equal to number of protons, which is equal to our number of electrons. So that means for hydrogen, we will have one electron because our atomic number is one. We will have two electrons for helium because its atomic number is two. So let's go ahead. We're going to look at our Bohr model of hydrogen first. So I made my nucleus. It's my first energy level, so I only need one orbit. And this is hydrogen, so there's only one electron. And so I will place my one electron. Now, it does not matter where on this circle your electrons are placed. What matters is that you have the correct number of electrons on the correct orbital. So let's look at helium. So Bohr model helium. So I'm going to start off by drawing my nucleus. And again, we're still in the first energy level. Helium has an atomic number of two, so two electrons. So two electrons will be placed. Let's look at our second energy level. And we're going to look mainly at lithium and neon. Those are going to be our two. Lithium has an atomic number of 3. 
neon has an atomic number of 10. And so I'll start each one by drawing out the nucleus. And we're in the second energy level, so that means we only need two orbits drawn out or two circles. For lithium, we have three electrons. So we've done the math. We know that the first energy level can only have a maximum of two electrons. So that means my third electron will then go to the next energy level. So one, two, three electrons have been placed. And so this is your Bohr model of lithium. So next up will be neon. If my atomic number is 10, I will have 10 electrons because they're the same. Protons equal the number of electrons, which equal your atomic number. So I'm going to go ahead. Only two electrons are on my first energy level. The remaining eight electrons will go into my second energy level. So one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight electrons are in my second, two are in my first, eight plus two equals 10. So all 10 of my electrons have been placed. And so this is my Bohr model for neon. The last little bit of information that I'm going to put on here is our number of valence electrons. Valence electrons are looking at electrons that are in the outermost orbital. So valence electrons, they are in the outermost orbital. And we're going to abbreviate the valence electron as VE dash. And we're going to go back over our four individual models. And we're going to look at our number of valence electrons. So in hydrogen, there's only one orbit. So that means that I only have one valence electron here. Helium, again, there's only one orbit, so that means all your electrons here will be valence electrons. But as we go into the next energy level, we're only looking at the outermost ring, your outer energy level. So that means there's only one valence electron right here because there's only one electron in this outermost circle. As we go over to neon, you have a total of eight valence electrons because there's only eight electrons in this outermost orbital. So if you kind of uh, go back to what we looked at last class again, that brings to light this in particular trend our valence electrons. Generally within our first family, we will only have one valence electron. So that's why both hydrogen and lithium have only one valence because both of these elements are in your first family. And just to kind of show the periodic table, hydrogen, lithium. So your first family only has one valence electron. Your second family will only have two. Family 13, three, 14, four, all the way up to 18. There's 18 family, our noble gases, should all have eight valence electrons except for helium. Helium will only have two, and that's because helium only has 
two electrons. So make sure you're aware of that one uh, exception. So that's really our main lecture for today. For our virtual students, we're also going to have a bonus activity. And our bonus activity is going to be our counting particles part two. This particular assignment is going to be taking apart your spreadsheet right here. There is a column which on your periodic breakdown, your periodic table breakdown, it's column 10, or I'm sorry, not 10, but column D, that gives you your number of nonmetals and metals, and you will simply select and copy that group, and then insert a pie chart by clicking insert chart. And so, this is just a bonus opportunity, but it should look something like, like this in the end. And I realize that this pie chart is taking a while to, to load up. But if you have any questions about uh, either the bonus assignment or uh, the activity for today, please let me know. Um, additionally, on your assignment, there is a total of one, two, three, four, five separate pages. I would like for you to complete only two of the five pages. You don't need to do all of them. So when you open it up within Kami, you only need to complete two pages. So that should be a total of eight problems that you have completed. Um, so let's go ahead. We'll make sure to, to show that. So that's your Bohr model worksheet. You only need to complete a total of two pages, a total of eight problems. All right, so make sure that you kind of go through and work on the uh, worksheets. And then you also have uh, your quiz for today. Um, if there's Anything else that you're having issues with or this particular subject isn't isn't clicking, please make sure to email me or within the GoGuardian chat, let me know um, how you're how you're feeling about this. And then that way we can kind of set up maybe a, a one on one session uh, through GoGuardian. If there's any other um, issues, just let me know. And I hope that you'll have a good weekend.